I'm here with Dr. Coleman. I'll have you introduce yourself. Hi, I'm uh, Rob Coleman. I'm a G1 oncologist at the uh, University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. And you are the captain of the surgeons team. What does that mean today? Well, it's great. It was, uh, it was an honor that was uh, given to me to uh, rally the support of the surgeons, the G1 oncologists in the, in the country, that, uh, to come out and support the cause and, uh, and, and run this race. What, as a group of surgeons, you're fighting every day in the, in the surgery and in the treatment rooms to fight for women's cancer and fight for the women that are fighting these diseases. What does this event mean today when you're out here running eight miles? Oh man, this is, this is so important. I cannot tell you that, that just the awareness. I mean, you can see, look at the awareness here. It's unbelievable. And uh, I, you know, it's, it's one of these things, you know, we had this a couple years ago and it was, a, it was a longer race and I really felt like this event was about the race and boy, did I learned this is not the case. This is about the movement and this has been a uh, an unbelievable thing for us um, the exposure uh, the excitement the enthusiasm um, and and the, and the camaraderie you know this is all these people are here for this one cause and it's it's um, it's just been an amazing thing for us awesome. what uh as you, uh, your passion for clinical trials uh, we've talked about it with other uh, doctors when you have a woman that's looking at it, the whole gamut of clinical trials they might be able to get into and enroll in what would you say to them when they find something that they can enroll in? What sh can you do to re release the fears that they have? Oh, that's a great question. And, you know, that's, the, that's one of the issues is that there is a lot of fear. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the one thing I always say about these clinical trials is that they're, they're very, very well thought out, heavily monitored, so that there's a lot of interactions with the, with the physician. And the thing is that, you know, people don't need to be afraid that they that they're, you know, may need to go someplace else to have the trial because the, most of the time all these doctors are in very tight communication and they're giving us the opportunity to, to, to really make a difference by studying these new treatments. And let's talk about how do you find a clinical trial? Uh, and, uh, and then how do you start narrowing it down? You're, maybe you've already had primary treatment or you're even looking at something and joining a clinical trial for your first treatment. How do you choose? Yeah, that's a great question too. The uh, it is it can be kind of challenging to tell you the truth. I mean, we, there are a lot of websites where you can um, where you can go and and like uh, clinicaltrials.gov is a, is a good one, and um, you can uh, or you can do it through the Foundations for Women's Cancer org and and you can uh, identify these. And then once you get to the websites, you can actually start to refine the search. And the tools have gotten much better, and so you can go through and try to pick your situation very clearly. And then as those, it'll start to narrow them down. But the, I think really the best thing is to come in and talk to your, your doctor um, and or your health care providers and ask them about this. You can bring in a menu and say, hey, listen, I've, I've, I found these. What, you know, which ones of these apply to me? And which ones might be the best for me? And, uh, and they'll go through it in a very methodical way and help, you, help them to, uh, decide. Awesome. Thank you very much.